we're going to go into a little bit different presentation for the mastermind to begin. Um, and it's really the foundation is back to the basics. A lot of you are going to be like, I already know this, but the truth is, it's so good sometimes to get into the foundation of how the street text program works really on the ad performance level. And then of course, on the true part that I think is going to be, you know, the success is dictated by your ability to create conversations with these people and then measure it. So I'm actually starting in the, the funnel part of street text, because this is where you, you launch ads from. So it's important to know, Hey, how do I launch ads? You know, it's not my coach that's going to do it for me. We're, you know, we're making you fishers of men, right? Fishers of Facebook leads to be honest. Um, and so part of that is just learning and it's not, um, I want to be honest, like it's super easy once you really figure it out foundationally. Um, but your funnels is where you launch new ads from sellers, buyers, listings, custom ads, all right in this funnels area. And then your ads themselves in this ad section is where you go and measure your analytics and make sure your ad is producing results that you want. Okay. And we'll talk about what those numbers should be. All your available templates are here. And I mean, to make sense of them all, um, you know, really, you're really truly just trusting us on which one that we we suggest you because you can go out and I see Jennifer you do it all the time you try these new ads and you always come back to the ones that <laughs> that we always sell you to use okay and there's a reason why we do that you know if you look at all these ads they come with live stats and there's one that we really have found to be the most successful at this moment based on stats alone it's the what's your home really worth so if you're going for seller leads you stay into the what's your home really worth not to say you shouldn't go back to the you know if someone were to buy your home would you sell it you know, with the three emojis, but this right here at this moment in time is producing the highest click to contact ratio. So you can see 3,367 active people using it with the 63.5% click to contact ratio. So that means, you know, if you got low cost per clicks, you're going to get leads six to seven out of 10 clicks are going to become at least an address submission. This is why you're seeing this average cost per lead of about $1.97. The average cost per email, $5.37. Average cost per phone number, $16. Now, this is data that is combined from Canada and US, you know, high end Beverly Hills market, you know, Fargo, North Dakota, and everything in between, right? So the key is you have a coach, so you can you can you can say, hey coach, is this something that like is right for this market because every market's going to be different depending on the marketplace you're auctioning against every other advertiser in the area not just real estate just remember that it's an auction house so we sometimes say hey don't start with nine go a little bit higher go to 12 try 15. it's not sometimes you need to, to play a little bit more aggressively okay but the split test rules the split test rules you'll hear it over and over again and so what do you do how to build this ad well you literally click select on that particular template and you're not just picking a blue home, by the way, just because it shows as a blue home, you're not picking the blue home. You can pick the blue home if you want, but we have a, a few different ways to do it. Okay. I, um, Jennifer kind of has her own imagery and it's been working really well, but the first thing you do is you see this ad template. It says, what's your home really worth? And then, then the call to action basically says, what's your, uh, you know, enter your address, just receive your home value. I think that in itself is, is why this is so successful because it's not asking them for anything but an address. And obviously you played the numbers from there because there's tr complete transparency in that ask. Enter your address, receive your home value. Unlike the, if someone were to buy your home, would you sell it, find its value in the current market? They don't know what they have to provide here. It's very obvious you enter your address, receive your home value. So I love, I love the transparency and the integrity of that process. Now, as far as images are concerned, you can literally pick from stock. My suggestion is that unless you find an art, like you, you want to make sure the home that you choose is architecturally, you know, something that you would see in your market. Don't embellish it. Don't put in something that's not realistic to what people would see out there. And um, this is why, you know, a lot of, of what I do is actually say, don't do the stock, pull in your own image, upload a, upload a file. And, and a lot of what I'll show you, I won't do it right now, but a lot of what I show people is actually to take the map image from the trial and just upload it into here it just seems to pull every time it's a really solid opportunity um but i'll just grab an image from from jennifer and this is the one that she's been using quite well um you know it's cool she made it up and she could probably teach you how to do it 
but this is the home. This is the image she's working right now. This is the ad that's working for her. And um, you know, it could be anything. Again, you have a coach, this is what we can help you with. But then you click next. And then it's just a ad targeting. Okay, so a lot of you might just, you know, say something like Raleigh here and, and choose it, not knowing that 15 miles is automatically gonna be surrounding that. So we actually say, don't do it. Don't do it like that. Cause you can't see what 15 miles looks like. Forget about typing in the target location, use drop a pin feature. And instead, if you use, like for example, if you used Raleigh as my example, now I just really wanna get clear on the toggle full screen of what those boundaries are. And it really, really applies when you're using any one of our map ads. So for some of you that start in trial or have used our map ads all the time, if you don't know 15 miles, you're gonna get, you're not gonna get an effective leaf flow going because you're not addressing with that panned out image, the 15 miles and maybe a little bit wider at times market that you're getting in front of. So you start here, ad targeting 101, start with your pin drop, get clear with the boundaries of that north, south, east and west bubble. Because once you know it, and I mean, this is really easy to move too. like, you may be like, oh, you know what, I actually want to move north, I want to move south, I want to move east, west, actually, 15 miles is a minimum, by the way, guys, you can, you can go as wide, you can go as big as 50 miles if you want. And for you Canadians, 15 miles is a starting starting point of 25 kilometers. So you get really clear there, because if you don't, you might be running into another state. If you don't, you might be running into another country in some cases. So be clear on what that 15 miles is and move it accordingly. And then that's a good starting point. And so once you figure that out, you click done and you like lock, you basically lock into a longitude latitude, right? So always get clear what your targeting is and then build your ad image accordingly if you're using the map or if, if, if you're not, it, didn't, it won't matter. But if you are using the map in this image, you get clear that your pin drop is the first thing, you adjust your image and then you click next next and then this is really wherever everything is about launching i recommend just to keep it on facebook for the sellers i recommend you know i've been kind of playing around as, as ten dollars is a good starting point now you know we've been at that nine dollars a day for almost five years so i think it's it's, it's you know it's about time to maybe go a dollar higher <laughs> uh, just to be a little bit more competitive and then as far as launching the split you can launch up to five at the same time up to five we kind of conservatively say start at three okay and then you just deploy and you de and once you deploy it will build all three to five ads at the same exact time same exact time and so that is how you actually set up a best practice ad right there it's the what's your home really worth funnel you throw that in your coach can really help you with that but get really clear with that i've seen a bunch of people in the group who say my ad stopped my ad stopped Okay, or my ad's not performing, then turn it off. Exactly. And I'm going to interject there too, because that's a common mistake is like, if it's not getting your results, don't like be so quick to turn it off. Like if it's just one day, things are going to ebb and flow. When I commonly see, see people panic when they get no leads in a day. Like I know Joe was in the group. I was talking with him the other day and he said he's used to getting like 10 leads a day. And during the one day, he's like, I haven't gotten any leads today. And then some people started to comment. And then by the end of the day, he's like, okay, four or five leads ended up coming in by the end of the day. So don't jump to conclusions. It's a seven day trend compared to the lifetime value of your app. Use like a week and look to see like, don't jump so quick. And common mistakes are you've hit a spending limit. Facebook has stopped your ads. So make sure you're checking to see that you haven't hit some sort of spend limit. Because sometimes your leads have stopped because of another reason on Facebook, your ads aren't being delivered. So I've also noticed Facebook recently is making you go in and do a two-factor authentication. They'll stop your ads because they need you to verify something or the payment's not processing. So just before you jump to conclusions, like let the ad run its course for a couple of days after that when they lead slow, because I've seen ads do that. And then all of a sudden, boom. And then they sometimes will come back even a little bit stronger. So don't jump too quick to launching a new split test. Because split yeah. tests are more costly if you're launching them every other day. And also pay attention to you know how long your ad's been running. If you if your ad's been running for two weeks, now in the light in the, the last seven days column, things are starting to fall off the map. 
well, it might be time to start, you know, testing other ads and see if you can find a replacement. If that ad's been running for three months and all of a sudden the, the last seven days is a little off kilter, you can give it a little bit more leash, right? There's a little bit more time for it to, to, for it to rectify itself. So do, uh, do look at that as well. Awesome. Yeah. I mean, and you know, I, everybody, every coach has a different way of kind of showing it, but we kind of conservatively say 24 to 40 hours. And you know, the more ads you run, the, the more splitting, I think the more aggressive you can be when you start getting really proficient at seeing trends, especially click to contact ratios and phone numbers coming in, in the first 24 hours, you can kind of like say, Ooh, this is what I like. Um, and another thing to take notice of is when you go into your ads and you're kind of seeing, well, which is the ad that I want to continue? Cause what if you have three ads running, they're all similar results or somewhat similar by a dollar or two. This is why we have this show leads feature. So the show leads feature will take you directly into the leads that you have from each split test. So if you're running one, two, three at the same time, you really want to go and analyze those leads early on and say, is this the leads that are, I'm, you know, would like to work with? Are they in the 15 miles? Are they higher quality? How many phone number submissions do we have here? You know, that's how you make the decisions. It's not always simply the, you know, what's the lowest cost lead? What's the lowest cost email? What's the lowest cost, you know, click? It's sometimes you're like, well, I have three ads and maybe this one is a dollar or two higher for a cost per lead, but it's giving me leads in an area that I prefer working in. And it's a higher price point and it's a neighborhood I'm really familiar with. And I had a good conversation with one of those leads. So I want to reinforce that with Facebook. So that's going to be my North Star as opposed to always just focusing on the lowest cost lead. I think we get, you know, Sometimes some of us here get guilty of always trying to get the lowest cost lead and never working on actually getting a conversation started with that lead. It's not the game of who gets the lowest cost lead, right? All right, so I'll share my screen here and I'll walk through how to read these ad metrics because this is important, you know, really understanding and making sure that you know exactly what these numbers mean. And we're really trying to make this as simple as possible for you guys. Um, cause if you're to try to do this in the ad manager, it's a bit of a nightmare. As we always say, it's the labyrinth of confusion. So I'm just going to show, this is a split test. Um, I've shown this one many times before. I just like it cause it makes it super simple and easy to read. But as we've walked through these three ads, exactly identical to each other, except for the audience and, um, run over a 24 hour period. So we'll just come down to this first ad first off to start reading this. So you always start at the top, your CPC, right? So this is your cost per click, what Facebook is charging you every time somebody clicks on that ad. In this case, this particular ad was $4.42. Now, if we have a budget set of $9 for the day, this is gonna result in two people being able to click on that ad, and then that's it. Nobody else is gonna be able to click on that ad because it's not gonna show up in anybody's newsfeed. So the lower cost per click, the better. Typically, if you're in around the $2 range, that's, you know, usually pretty good. If you can get lower than that, then that's great, right? So that's one of the things to take a look at. And you can see here in that 24-hour period, that's exactly what happened. We had two clicks. And uh, out of those two clicks, one person left their address, so was captured as a lead, and that per same person also left their email. So we then break down your ad spend, right? So your ad spend, in this case, $8.85, that's what your cost for to acquire that address was, and then also to acquire that email. Now, is that great? Not necessarily, right? Really high cost per click. It's, it's resulting in a very high cost per lead and email. So moving on to this next one, now we can compare those all, right? So we have cost per click here of $1.49, much better. It's what we want to see, right? It's allowing a whole lot more people to click on that ad. We saw seven clicks on this one. Unfortunately, this one didn't have a great click to contact rate. Right, so seven clicks resulted in two people actually leaving their contact information starting as an address. Right, so we got two addresses, and of those two addresses, one person additionally left their email. So again, we break down that ad spend. In this case, in that 24-hour period, it was ten dollars. Uh, it works out to five dollars and twenty-one cents for cost per lead, and then that full ten dollars for that email. Right, so it's even higher cost per email than the previous one. Right, not that great. You know, we, we don't want to stick with that one. This one was the clear winner, even better cost per click um, over its lifetime. And it was a very short lifetime on this one. 
but uh, 30 clicks and 30 addresses. So 100% click to contact rate in here. And that's fantastic. That's what everybody would love to see, right? It's not necessarily what's going to happen, but we break down the ad spend $1.36 cost per address and $3.39 for cost per email. This is why it's important to do that split test, right? Because in your market, you're going to very quickly determine what is a good performing ad. If we'd launched one ad, not done a split test and arrived at either of these two, you know, you're getting compared to this one, almost three times as many emails per day. And as Marcus just alluded to, you don't want to necessarily rest on um, just this because it is going to depend on the, you know, if you're getting a whole lot of phone numbers, right? But that's when you get two ads that are so close to each other, you're not quite sure, you know, which one is the winner out of these. Go check the contacts that are coming off of each one of them. Check to see if they're leaving phone number, check to see if they're in areas that you want, right? That's going to be your winner there. And it's not always necessarily the one that has the lowest cost per email. It might be just a little bit more, but if they're the leads coming from the area that you want, it's worth paying more for, right? So those are some things to consider. Some people just get focused on like, oh, I have the lowest cost per lead. And it's not necessarily always the case, but that leads to kind of the next thing is what is the pitfalls becoming an ad junkie? Ira, do you want to share on that a little bit? Yeah, you can get hyper-focused on getting amazing ad results, and that's where you spend all of your time. This tool is set up so that you can set up ads quickly and you can move on to what actually gets you results in real estate, which is follow-up, follow-up, follow-up. I see people all the time, like looking at the clicks, they have one bad interaction with somebody and they assume like this ad isn't working and they turn it off and they split test again, turn off and split test again. And commonly when we look at the people who are winning and having great results, there's one thing that's continuous with them is they consistently have an ad running and that ad sometimes might ebb and flow. And sometimes as coaches, we'll even go in and say, you could do better than that ad. <laughs> like the ad that you're running is not doing that great, but they're so hyper-focused on the thing that gets the ball across and they're hyper-focused on the follow-up that they're not even really paying that much attention. So you still need to pay attention to your ads, but don't let one day of leads get you split testing again. Don't let a bad interaction make you run in and split test again. Like he, uh, Steve says it all the time. If you've been to his ad tweaks class, like it's better to actually leave an ad on running consistently than it is to turn it on and off and on and off and on and off. Like you want to keep it something that's running consistently, focus on your follow-up and just keep an eye on that seven day trend on the ad, as opposed to continuously split testing because Facebook favors you when you have that continuity on there and you're going to fall into the habits that get you results, which is focusing on the follow-up, not on the ad results. Like you, you're going to have bad interactions. You're going to have, like, I've seen people say, I need to turn my ad off because I have all these nasty people commenting on it. Well, block, delete, or turn it positive and keep your ad running. You're always going to have nasty comments on Facebook. You're not going to be able to avoid that or get around the people that click because they're sitting in a basement and they're just asking the value of their landlord's home. Like focus on the follow-up, make sure you have good results, but don't get stuck in that ad performance trap, turning them on and off. Consistency is what's going to win you here. We were going to talk a little bit about the lead capture process. I think that's pretty simple. If you want to, you know, view what that looks like, go to your ad section, click on view link, capture yourself as a lead, but it's dynamic, right? First captures address. Then it asks for their email, which fires off an automated email. As soon as they, they uh, put that information saying that you have received the request and that you're working on it. Next up, they can enter in their phone number and their name. If they enter in the phone number, they get an automated text message from you. But a lot of what we get in through this whole process is what do I do with these leads, right? So what do I do with an address only lead? What do I do with a, with somebody who sent, submitted an email? What do I do uh, when I get a reply with, uh, from the SMS? So we'll quickly kind of touch on those. Um, what we want to point you guys to is that there is a lot of resources available for you. Um, and we'll walk through those as we go here to kind of just point you in those directions when you're wondering, what do I do with these? So if you go to the right hand column here, it says topics in this group, click see all. And 
it's going to be a whole lot. Unfortunately, Facebook has moved to this like um, uh, hashtag method, so it's not as efficient as possible. But look through here. If you, you know, there's the masterminds. We're tagging each one of those. Some testimonials. There's some video examples. If you want to check out what people are doing, like as far as their first intro video, a couple how tos in there. We're trying to be as good as possible catching these these posts. But right here, address only examples. And so you can see these, right? So these are examples of what people are doing as far as they're sending out a postcard just to get a little bit more information. They're saying, hey, I've received your, your request and I'm putting it together for you. I just need an email to send it to, right? And some people are putting a little QR code on these postcards. They're slipping this in the mail. They're sending it to them. Other people are sending a full evaluation via the mail, right? So you can check out some of these examples in here because, and we're going to, you know, as these, as you guys post your examples in the insider group, we'll just tag them, right? So there's always a resource in here to check out, like, what are people sending out? And it's a matter of coming in here and going, okay, I, I like this, or, you know, I don't like that. That doesn't match my style, or, you know, I'm going to take this and I'm going to adapt it and change it up a little bit better, you know? And that's a lot of some of these these examples in here have evolved from this mastermind itself, people sharing what they're doing, right? Leon shared that he's been putting QR codes on there. And all of a sudden everybody's like, you know, adapting and, and putting QR codes and, and doing all the stuff. Here's uh, David had shared in one of the masterminds that he is using uh, wax seals on his envelopes that are going out to these because it just puts that extra little level of touch, personal touch. Now it feels more personalized when it hits their inbox. Are they more likely to toss that in the recycle bin or are they probably going to open it? Likely they're going to open it. Um, so that's kind of what you want to do. And if you're not in this, in this insider group, make sure that you ask your coach to invite you in, right? That's kind of the important piece in there. So <clears throat> really great resource for that. Um, you know, address only, I, I mean, it's COVID right now, right? So maybe some people don't necessarily want to go and do some door knocking, but some places they're totally fine with that. Go for it, right? Do, do a pop by, bring them a little mug with, you know, some goodies in it or something like that. Say, Hey, I got your request. I just wanted to meet you in person and let you know that there's, there's somebody actually behind all of this. This is real. Here's a little gift for myself. Enjoy. Um, you know, and you're going to see a couple of those examples in the insider group as well. Yeah. And let me, let me express every one of you beyond the trial that becomes full members is going to have your own custom URL because of the Apple iOS update soon. It's going to be so advantageous for you. You know, whether it's like windyhomevalues.com or jenniferhomevalues.com, whatever you choose, we're going to have that for you. So for mailers, for address only, for what you send to get them back into the funnel, it's going to be awesome the, for your branding, for, for lots, of, lots of uses you're going to have that for. And then, you know, when I'm showing you an example of that wax, you know, this guy, I, he will share something that shows you why he does that. But he went from a half percent mail to something like, uh, I think was Troy was like eight, 50% of those being open. Cause who's not gonna open one of those in the mail with a wax stamp on it, especially made personally. And it's not like we're saying do that for address only leads. We're saying do that for people that you wanna make an impression upon. If they left you a bunch of information and it's in an ideal area and you've had any sort of feedback and you're like, I want this home, right? This is, I wanna make an impression with this person. You know, we had a great conversation. They weren't ready yet, but I'm gonna follow up with a piece of mail I'm going to put something in there. I might throw in a little coffee card to a local coffee shop. I'm going to be a go-giver because those that give, those that contribute, those that really give freely in this type of funnel are those that actually end up getting the most clients from street text. It is not a funnel. If you think about it for people that are ready to buy or sell today, that can happen, but that's usually an exception. That's usually conditional around their health, their finances, relational issues, just, you know, you just so happen to get lucky and get them. But majority of these people, you need to build some relationship with. And they're not, unless you create that impression and that experience from the very get go from the very click itself. So I think it's so important as you as you consider these ads for people that are new, if you consider these ads and people scrolling down their Facebook feed, they weren't looking for you, you interrupted their feed with something that felt like I was going to get an automated home value. That felt like I was going to get an automated list of properties with a pool under 299 in Dallas, Texas. They thought they were getting this instant gratification 
call. And so when they get back to their inbox or get a text or a phone call from you, it better be a, about reframing that experience that comes from contribution, no obligation, my way of giving back, absolutely free. I'm gonna update this as often as possible. It's gonna even be a better experience than anything a computer algorithm could do for you. Before we move off of uh, mailers, <clears throat> one thing that I've been finding uh, incredibly successful so far is uh, I've, I've, it's value stacking. Right. And forgive me for anybody who's heard me say this before, but I, I think that's really important to, to look at it this way. When you buy something off Amazon, right, what do you see at the bottom? People who bought this item also bought this, this and this. And you even think to yourself, well, I didn't even think about that, but I certainly want that. People who are looking for a home valuation, what else do they want? Right. So if you leave me your address only and I send you a mailer that says, hey, you didn't leave me all your information, but I need it to get you a better valuation. Well, if I offer them a valuation, they only traded their address for that info information. Why would they then give me more for that same offer? Consider upping your ante. Right. So say something in your mailer to the nature of, you know, here's your price range. Here's what I can give you back on an address, whatever your, your spiel is. But also one thing that my clients often are looking for is not only today's value, but to, they would like to be updated as to what's happening in the market around them. If you were to text me your email address, I'd be happy to set you up on an instant notification list, alerting you of any property type like yours that hits the market or sells, which no doubt it will affect your home's value, right? So just something in addition. So not just the same offer you've been offering them, but something a little bit more, you know, in, inclusive, exclusive, if you will, Instant free offer, same as always, but it's it's a low barrier. Text me or email, and I'll be able to do the following. You can do you can come up with so many different ideas that are just a little above and beyond that might be enough to push them over the edge. And how hard is that for them to text you their their email to get this other thing? Maybe it's Homebot. Maybe you don't have you haven't set them up on Homebot yet because hey, all they've given you is an address. Great. Here's what I'd like to do for you right? I want to set you up on this free service in order to do this for you. I need you to text me your email address. Simple. And then utilize that, right? Double down, look through your spectrum of services, what you already pay for and what you use and how can you add that into the value and say your address only. So I'll get you this if you give me what was missing. Simple. Yeah. And there's a couple of things. I mean, you're, you're going to want to know where to get resources immediately. And the way to get resources immediately is to go straight either in the group and then just search by topic. There's a little, it's small, it's a magnifying glass, just search, you know? So if I typed in address only, I'm going to, I'm going to search for it from my line desk user. I'm going to type in line desk. If I'm a KV core person, I'm going to type in KV core for all you people that are, have all these systems, bomb, bomb, you name it, you, you type it, you're going to see all these discussions by the most popular and by date posted. Okay. If I type in address only, for example, I'm going to go into post you've seen most recent so i can say who would what's the most recent people talking about address only that so i can start kind of just reading through this stuff um another thing in your own account um if you go to your account you all have your own chat feature that'll take you directly to uh this little like it'll take you in touch with aiden right there so if you ever need something you can send us a message right here and and then you really want to know that we have a ton of articles already built in for you you know, ton of articles that you can search for. So you can go right into there and search these articles, um, you know, so like how to, you can follow, find a ton. Well, you know, you go, go to the question mark. It's probably the easiest place to start in your account. And you can literally find everything starting with the getting started, right? And you can search for almost anything. So recognize what you already have. Um, and, and of course, you know, you have your coach as well, but then, and then don't forget, we have all these great group classes. So you're at the mastermind, which is in this Calendly forward slash three text link. So remember, you want this link, we can put it in the chat feature right now because you also have conversion workshops. That's where you saw Space Cowboy talk about his personal touch that I just shared with you. That's every Tuesday. Uh, we have a review your ads coming up with Steve here in the next, what is it, hour? Yeah, coming up at 11 a.m. You can actually review all your ads and learn how to use all 35 plus of funnel, funnel templates. And you just register for it and you're in it just like you are here. And then every Tuesday with Logan, you have a custom ads class because, you know, you're going to have other ads that you want to try. Ideas that you have, developments, uh, rent to own options, you know, hey, I got this great idea about doing this. Let's, let's try to go after this lead. So we can do everything with you. You just got to know where these resources are. Right. And then also recognize you have your integrations button in your settings 
to integrate through email parsing or through Zapier with almost anything you already have. That would be a good place to start. 